It's that time of the year again. Is No Nut November actually good for you? Millions of men try it every year, but the science is pretty clear on what actually happens when you abstain from ejaculation. I'm Dr. Mina Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today we're breaking down the truth about semen retention. What increases, what decreases, and the one thing your body does automatically that ruins the whole challenge. So what exactly is semen retention? It's the practice of avoiding ejaculation in any form. No sex, no masturbation, no release whatsoever. And every November, many guys participate in No Nut November, which is a 30-day challenge that started from a Reddit post in 2011 and became a viral phenomenon. Now this video is not meant to tell you to participate or to avoid the challenge. If you try this practice out of curiosity and it helps you in any way, psychologically or spiritually, by all means, continue doing it. However, I want to clear up the scientific misconceptions that surround the practice because many people claim that semen retention boosts testosterone, improves fertility, creates massive ejaculate volume. And the question is, does science actually back this up? Before we dive into this research, if you're serious about optimizing your sexual health, grab my free science back guide covering the top 10 things that actually enhance pleasure and performance. No myths, just evidence. Get it at www.renamalikmd.com slash more pleasure. Now let's break down what the science really says. Let's start with testosterone. In all the scientific literature, there are only two small studies, one that has 10 men, another with 29 men that looked at testosterone levels during semen retention. The first study showed testosterone increase after three weeks of abstinence, but there's a catch. These were young, healthy men who knew that after three weeks, they'd get to watch pornography and masturbate at the study's end. Now this matters because it's an anticipatory cue. Your brain is actually expecting a sexual reward and this naturally spikes your sex hormones. So your body is literally preparing you to pursue that sexual reward by increasing testosterone. The second study found that testosterone did increase after seven days, but then it quickly dropped back down. So even if there is an increase, which I doubt, it's extremely short-lived and likely driven just by the anticipation of being able to ejaculate, not the retention itself. Now for fertility, and this might surprise you. Semen quality actually declines the longer you abstain, especially after five to seven days. So after that time, without ejaculation, studies have shown increased DNA fragmentation, worse shape or morphology, and reduced movement or motility. So if you're trying to conceive, having a prolonged abstinence actually works against you. But there is one claim that's actually true. Abstaining from ejaculation does increase semen volume. And multiple systematic reviews, meaning studies that combine tons of studies and analyze them as a whole, have looked at this. The first systematic review looked at 17 studies with absence periods up to 14 days. And the second one analyzed 30 studies. Both confirmed essentially that longer abstinence equals more volume. But here's a detail that most people miss, the rate of change. Semen volume increases by about 12% per day during that first four days. After that, the rate slows significantly down. And there's two reasons for this. First, your body starts reabsorbing the semen that isn't ejaculated. It doesn't just keep building indefinitely. And second, the longer you abstain, the more likely you're gonna have a wet dream or nocturnal emission. It's essentially your body's normal physiologic response or like automatic reset button, which is completely out of your control. And when that happens, you're back to zero in terms of volume. And this is where I take real issue. For some people, they really take this as a failure when they have a wet dream or they're told by their community that this is a terrible thing and how could they let this happen? Guys, you have no control over your wet dreams or your nocturnal emissions. It is a normal physiologic process, so don't worry about it. It is completely normal. When it happens, clean it up, move on. Bottom line, if you are genuinely trying to maximize semen volume or even sperm health, the science says that about four to five days is your sweet spot. Going 30 days for No Nut November, you're probably just absorbing that semen or having a wet dream regardless. And for couples who are trying to conceive, I generally recommend that having sex every other day during that fertile window, like before and at during ovulation, optimizes both volume and quality of your semen. So what I want you to take away, guys, is semen retention is surrounded by tons of myths. 
that it's going to enhance testosterone, fertility, and God knows what else. The reality is, yes, you might increase volume a little bit, but your body has natural limits and retaining semen is not going to give you a magical superpower. So whether you participate in No Nut November for the challenge, the community, or the curiosity, now you know what's actually happening in your body. If you found this helpful and want to separate fact from fiction about your sexual health, hit the subscribe button and find me here every week, giving you answers to the questions that most doctors just won't. And as always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.